of 14 August 2023. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mr. Franciak, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Carter. Present. Mr. Young. Here. Mr. Walters. Ms. Cleveland McGrath. Here. Ms. Moulton. Here. Here. Mr. McDougall. Here. Ms. Hubick. Here. Thank you. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Right. announcements and committee reports just a couple of ones from me I appreciate uh, everybody's patience with a number of street projects waterline replacement projects it is uh, construction season in the Northwest uh, so we've got a lot of stuff going on and also our community partners over at Island Hospital have some construction that started today with the uh, entrance in uh, and the new helo pad so just uh, they're staying open on the 24th Street entrance, but just to be aware, there might be different ways to get to see your uh, medical, your health professionals. Um, and then I will make a quick uh, comment. I've had some inquiries. I know we've all uh, seen the tragedy that's happening in Maui. I've been fortunate to uh, travel there a few times in my life. And, uh, um, but I just want to let the members of the public know that the city of Anacortes, uh, we prepare for all types of disaster. Every disaster is unique. Uh, there are many variables, especially when it comes to fires. Uh, the city of Anacortes did a significant uh, disaster drill in March with all uh, staff, and, uh, but we continue to improve our response to all types of emergencies. And in the area of wildfires, uh, some of the things that uh, we've done um, is just in the last month, we have uh, Brush 29. Uh, which is a wildland firefighting truck. I know the council is aware of, but it is now uh, available. It allows us to bring a significant amount of water to much more, uh, um, uh, much more challenging locations in our forest lands. Uh, as well as um, if I know public safety committee is aware, and I think most of council is aware, a number of our parks department staff are red card trained. And what that means is they're actually trained in wildland firefighting. Our chief continues to lead the effort with uh, wildland uh, urban interface education with members of the public. We still have our uh, DNR contract for uh, air support when we have areas in our forest lands that our, our uh, equipment can't get to. And uh, just a reminder, yeah, it's dry and hot. Uh, burn ban's still in effect. Uh, you're still allowed to do uh, uh, recreational fires with, uh, with a permit from the city. But again, please be smart. Uh, especially when it's windy with that. And also, if you're interested, uh, a thing called Code Red allows you to sign up with uh, Skagit 911 and you can get uh, alerts from 911 to your cell phone, to your email, to your home phone, and you set up your geographic locations and the type of alerts you want to hear. So I uh, just would make a quick comment on uh, public safety there. All right, so now uh, Economic Development Committee uh, report is first. Who's taking that one? Mayor Miller. Mr. Young. Uh, Ms. Hubrick and I will sort of tag team it just a bit if okay. Um, we met on last week and um, it was Ms. Hubrick, myself, um, Mr. Coleman and um, Stephanie, I can't think of her last name, but Stephanie. So it was a wonderful meeting. We talked about our strategy. Our goal was to go out in the community and to walk the businesses on commercial. And uh, we sort of divided up into twos, um, Mr. Coleman and Ms. Hubick on one side, Stephanie and myself on the other. And we stopped at businesses and we really just wanted to sort of hear what their thoughts are, successes are, ideas are for the city, and also to assure them that um, we are listening to them, we're looking for solutions that can help us, and it's more than just rhetoric. The reason the Economic Development Committee was formed was to focus on Anacortes and then look out from there into other ways to partner with other organizations and groups that's out there. And there were a couple of interesting things that came up on my side, but uh, there were issues 
uh, that the businesses were looking for, issues that some were concerned about parking, some weren't, some were concerned about different things. So what it gave us was a bit of a beginning to find the synergies between the two and the low-hanging fruit that we can go after. But the good news that came out, at least for me, and I'll let Ms. Hubick elaborate further, is that you know, they were happy that we came out to talk with them. And they felt really open and honest about the things that were going right with the city because there was a lot of accolades to the work that's happening in the city. But they also had ideas and they wanted to feel like they were participating in the decisions that were being made. And that's absolutely right. So we started off the conversations because um, it was the Wednesday after um, Arts Festival wrapped up. So started off the conversations. How did Arts Festival go with you to kind of have that open up the door? Some people were open and had a great week weekend. Some people were open and had an okay weekend. Some people weren't open. And so then we were diving into some of the other questions, um, like how were your other festivals? What are you looking forward to? And people just really started opening up and offered up um, feedback on parking in general, on the parklets that I know the different committees um, are working on to develop policy around um, mentioning things like bike racks. Is there something that the city can do to provide bike racks? You know, having them be really nice could be kind of fun if we had some partnerships with like the welding team out at Skagit Valley College, but something just functional would also be um, fantastic. And it was nice to also just get staff walking around with both of us to kind of re-cement the good relationship that staff that's no longer with us because of retirement reasons um, had with our business community in town. So we just want to make sure that people know that if they have questions, um, especially as it relates to planning or economic development, um, who they need to reach out to. If I can add just one last thing, Mir. Uh, the thing that I really want to commend the staff, uh, John and Stephanie in particular, uh, for the hard work that they've done, the pre-work that they did, and meeting, having already met with some people uh, in, uh, um, you know, in the downtown corridor, which was also wonderful, but also at the same time recognizing that they will be the conduit for much of the information as we meet and discuss it, and that they will compile it. We were talking about our strategic plan, thoughts about it, how we wanted to go about um, extrapolating where do we go from here and how do we get there as a city. So it was really wonderful, and I, I just wanted to commend them for a job well done. All right, thank you. Next up is Finance Committee. Uh, Mayor Mill. Uh, Mr. McDougall. Yeah, uh, Mr. Young and myself attended Finance Committee last week, um, and it was primarily a discussion sort of preview of 2024 budget and um, a number of, uh, we, we covered a number of items. First of all, on the property tax side, the new um, levy lid lift should provide approximately 2.1 million for public safety. And so that makes property tax uh, number, you know, that gets added to the aggregate property tax number, taking it to about 7.7 .7 million. Um, one of the rules with the, uh, the levy lid lift <clears throat> is we're not allowed to, in the year we pass it, we're not allowed to also take the 1% property tax addition. So that's something that we'll have to skip later this fall when uh, normally we would uh, pass that. Uh, second item we covered was sales tax. And basically, you know, we had, uh, basically the city had been looking at economic headwinds last year when doing budgeting and so forecast sort of a 5% decrease. Um, and turns out that we're actually down 2.5% um, or we're trailing 2.5% from that 5% decrease. So basically property tax is about 7.5% behind where it was last year. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, hoping that uh, the late summer and festivals and things like that help catch that up. Um, but a big factor in the um, in the lower numbers is construction related sales tax, where we've basically issued one third of the permits that we did over the course of you know the basically the first seven or eight months of the year versus the first seven or eight months of the last two years. So we're uh, much slower on a new new building new permits. Uh, so in twenty twenty, uh, I guess. It, in aggregate this year, we could see as much as an 800K shortfall in sales tax. Um, you know, 
I guess stay tuned. We're, we're keeping an, an eye on that. Uh, another item is uh, we discussed debt service around like potentially, you know, combining the fiber ladder truck and station three. Um, alternatively, there's, we have FEMA funds from the, there was a Washington Park trail washout that occurred um, a little while back and FEMA provided some funds and those actually don't have to be used necessarily for that. Uh, it was, you know, as Mr. Hoagland was explaining, it's kind of like an insurance payout where you could repair your car or you could use the, the payout for something else. So in theory, we could use that to actually pick up the ladder truck and that would actually reduce our total debt service load by, we estimate about 150K a year. So those are the main items we discussed. Um, Mr. Young, would you have anything else you'd like to add? Yeah. No, the, the only thing that I would probably add, Bruce, and I mean, Mr. McDougall, is that um, you know part of the hard look is the trend um, and the discussion of whether or not we would have a slower downturn as an economy. And uh, the good news is, is that um, we, there were certain things that were built into our projections before, and there mm -hmm. may be some additional adjustments necessary, but the good news is that the staff and the team and the mayor and we're all on it and we're watching. And um, so we'll make those decisions as they come due. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, thank you for that report. I always uh, say that Mr. Ho one of Mr. Hoagland's most difficult jobs is shaking that crystal ball and trying to figure out how much revenue we're going to expect as we try to build a budget around that. So thanks for that. Next up is uh, Housing Affordability and Community Services Committee. Mayor Miller. Ms. Moulton. Thank you. The HACS committee met last Wednesday at 9, and it was, a, it was myself and Planning Director John Coleman and um, Planning Administrator staff um, Stephanie Snyder. And we had guests from the community, mainly service providers from Community Action, the Family Center, and some that I'm forgetting off the top of my head right now. So it was a good group, as always. We heard from Stephen Simmons, who's at Community Action, and he's spearheading the meetings amongst the providers to, to work on the communication amongst them. We've talked about that in the past. So they had their first meeting two Thursdays ago, and there's a lot of enthusiasm there from the providers. So it's really going to be a good thing going forward. So there's excitement around that. Another piece of Great news is that Community Action has found an office here in town in the building where we're very excited at the, where the Chamber of Commerce is. And they are going to be open there very soon. And so that'll be great to have them downtown and very accessible to the people that need them. We talked a bit about some housing legislation that passed this year and just I'm not going to go into all of that now, um, but different different things that are going on at the state that will affect how we do things here in ways that we can help our residents better. And there's, we had a representative from the Samish Nation there, Justin Krupa, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, and he gave us some good news as well that they were able to purchase a building, a fourplex that was in affordable that was affordable but in danger of being sold on the, to, to market rate, or sold to be brought up to market rate prices for those units. So that's really good news that four, four affordable units were saved and thanks to the Samish Nation for doing that. And they are great partners with us when we work on projects of all kinds. And that is pretty much it. Oh, we talked. A little, I'm sorry. One last thing. We talked about CDBG reporting and how difficult that is, but um, that's not that interesting. <laughs> um, so anyway, it was kind of a technical meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next up is planning committee. Mayor Miller. Miss Cleland McGrath. Thank you. So we had our planning committee meeting uh, just before city council today, and it was Ms. Moulton and myself and uh, planning director and Ms. Grange. Um, so we kind of had a easy flow of a meeting we had four things we kind of we discussed but also went off and talked about other other issues um first was we've uh, had a request from the 
theater um, to do some modifications regarding their land lease. Um, I think that we felt the committee feels that we need a little bit more information and also some guidance from our city attorney before we go any further with that. Um, then there was some cleanup. It turns out uh, AMC 19.48.020 um, had some modifications regarding cargo containers. And just to kind of clean it up and make it more clear. Um, the other exciting news is we've had applications for um, auto repair businesses to open up in the industrial zone, which made us realize that we somehow omitted the general services as an allowed use um, when we did the code update. So we are going to have to go through the whole process um, of having that go to planning commission, go through SEPA and whatnot. It was, I think, just an oversight when they transitioned. We did such a large change um, that that occurred, but should be not an issue. And then we just kind of started to have a brainstorming about uh, the fact that we're going to have to work on our comp plan update and what that looks like at urban growth area, land capacity analysis, and then some of the issues that we want to address in that next update. So it was, it was a nice light meeting where we got to chat, but uh, hit some of those high notes for you all there. All right, thanks. Next up is Parks and Recreation Committee. Mayor Miller. Ms. Moulton. The Parks and Recreation Committee met last Wednesday, and as so many of our committee meetings have been lately, it was all about the capital facilities plan. So we saw what Parks has in mind for improvements and projects over the next five years, and they will come forward in more detail as we, as we look at that in the fall during budget season, but lots of good stuff coming up with Parks. Okay, thanks for all those uh, good reports. And I am on to item 3F, it's an award presentation. Washington State Department of Ecology Outstanding Performance Award. And I have to say, well, I'll give you some time, uh, Mr. Walker, to come on up here, because you're gonna come, I'm gonna give you a little extra time because you're a, a super trooper for showing up uh, with a little bit of extra accoutrements on you. Uh, but I know you wanna be here to represent your great team and, uh, and then I'm gonna, I'll read the quick little letter from Ecology. Um, the, the Department of Ecology Northwest Region Office would like to congratulate the City of Anacortes on receiving the 2022 Wastewater Treatment Plan Outstanding Performance Award for the staff's continued high performance in the operation of your treatment facilities. Anacortes Wastewater Treatment Plant has a great record as one of the top municipal wastewater treatment plants in Washington based on effluent limits, submittals, and overall plant compliance. Ecology would like to commend the team for the Anacortes Wastewater Treatment Plant for their perseverance, dedication, and award-winning efforts. It takes, a, takes pronounced effort and teamwork to operate and maintain a wastewater treatment plant in top running order. So I will uh, present this to you, and of course, you'll uh, take this back to your great staff. Thanks, and, and again, I know you'll pass on uh, the great work. Um, I know council's very appreciative of all the great work because I know we, uh, council signs off on a lot of maintenance contracts to keep that plant rolling, so thanks. All right, next up is item four, which is public comment. This is an opportunity for any members of the public that wishes to address the council on any issue that's not on our agenda, so uh, this would be the time. And I actually, overcame the technical difficulties and I'm up on uh, the Zoom. Okay, nobody's rushing towards the podium, so I will move on to our consent agenda, items 5A, B, C, and D. Council. Mayor Miller. Ms. Hubick. I'd like to make a motion to approve consent agenda items A through D. Second. 
Okay, a motion by Ms. Ubik, a second by Mr. Young to approve consent agenda items A through D. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we are on to item six, which is adjournment. There's no uh, items before the council, so I will adjourn the meeting. So thank you. Thank you. you.